Hello and welcome to Tushka Training. We're back with the third cookbook lesson um, and it's customizing toolbars. Um, this is a toolbar here. There are other toolbars which we'll cover in a second. Um, but if you look at this toolbar, which will be the first toolbar you'll see when you open up a default Reaper setup, for me, this is useless. Um, I, I'm very much text-based. Uh, I don't know what most of this means, to be honest. Uh, so one of the first things I'm going to do personally is, for instance, I'm going to go to undo and I'm going to change icon to text icon, undo, OK, and hit save. Now, as you can see, it's a text icon. This interface here is pretty much the exact same interface. In fact, it is the exact same interface with just a few extra options to the one we looked at in customizing menus. Uh, so if you need to know more about the interface itself, the copy and the paste in the move in loading actions and so on and so forth, then go to the customizing menus video and watch that through. It's a short video and you'll see what you need to know. Um, the difference is being here um, that when you hit add, it will automatically open the action box because there's no need for separators or sub menus or so on uh, but like I just showed you you now got change icon instead of rename so you can change the action that's associated to a particular button um, you can change the icon which will give you images if you're an image based person there's a whole bunch of them that come with Reaper as you can see um, personally like I say I'm a text person so I would use text icons um, to be perfectly honest with you, all these things that are on the main toolbar here are not something that I will ever use. I'm quite happy to open the file menu for new project, open project, save project, project settings, so on and so forth. I'm happy to open the edit menu if I want to click on undo or redo. Normally I'd use a keyboard shortcut, metronome and so on and so forth. Um, so I will be getting rid of all of this. Um, but as I showed you in the previous video, customizing menus, if you haven't got an active toolbar in your toolbar options, if I save this, nothing will happen. So I need to add uh, an action. I'm going to add a no op action. Actually, instead of adding a no op action this time, what we'll do um, is um, I'm just going to search for how you open the uh, custom uh, toolbar menu um, there is an action for this uh, what's it called customize let's see if we can find this here we go customize toolbars so I'm going to select that and I'm going to change this to um, A text icon and I'm gonna call it edit me and I'll show you why I'm changing it to edit me in a moment um, you've also got the option here to have double width toolbar button uh, which I will show you quickly as you can see it's double the size it would normally be um, I personally don't use that and the reason I personally don't use that is because I don't use standard um, icon sizes um, I, I let my icons be based on the image size itself, um, which is a, a preference uh, that well, I'll show you in a moment. Oh, actually, I'll show you now quickly. Um, there is a preference in appearance, um, and it will be don't scale toolbar buttons below one to one and don't scale toolbar buttons above one to one. And now what that does is it allows me in my interface here to use any icon size buttons that I create myself as you can see I've only got three in the main menu and they're my zoom tools for the arranger which is zoom to selected items zoom to time selection which is my loop because my time selection is linked to my loop and uh, zoom to entire project so I can zoom and I'll zoom the entire project it zooms horizontally and vertically uh, these are things we'll cover in a completely different tutorial but I'm just showing you now that there's different sizes of buttons that I use um all over my interface and these are all toolbars as well these are toolbars these are toolbars and these are toolbars which we will cover in a few seconds um 
So I've got my text-based icon up here and I've got edit me. So I'll close this. So now when I click edit me, it will actually open the customized menus toolbar so I can add in what I want to. And the reason I've put edit me in there is because it's actually a standard definition in Reaper. And I'll show you what I mean here. If I right click anywhere in the negative space, I've got switch toolbar. So I can switch between the various toolbars, including the MIDI toolbars here. Um, don't worry about the names because you can actually name them again in the uh, customize toolbar. Uh, if you notice here, you can't actually rename the main toolbar, um, but you can retitle all the other toolbars. So that's not a problem at all. Um, so like I say, on the right click, you've got switch toolbar. You can switch between your toolbars. You've got open toolbar. And what that will actually do is open that toolbar in the particular position where that toolbar was originally uh, or, or last um, set up. So open the toolbar there and you'll actually see now that um, it's opened the toolbar docker. Um, I don't actually have to open the other toolbars because they're all docked in the toolbar docker down here, like so. Now, what I did here purposely was I put toolbar 2 right at the end here so I could show you that I literally just left-click, drag, and I can pull it back down to here. So now I've reordered the toolbars however I want it. I've moved four after five and so on. I'm just moving like that. Now, another thing you can do is you can actually drag the toolbars to different parts of the interface. Or uh, if you prefer, you can right click and use position toolbar. Um, you can use this in the negative space anywhere as well. Um, but if you try to position the main toolbar elsewhere, um, it's, it's, it's completely pointless. You may as well just leave the main toolbar where it is because there's always going to be a toolbar here. You can't get rid of this space because it's in line with the, um, with the ruler and the markers. So even if you get rid of the toolbar here, you're just going to have empty space. You will just have empty space because there's nothing else. You can't fit another track in there because it's where the, the, uh, ruler and the markers are. So just leave the main toolbar there is my suggestion. Right. So we're going to position this toolbar. You can uh, close the toolbar from the position toolbar menu. You can float it, so it's floating like so, uh, which means you can move it anywhere you like, and you can pin it there, so it will never go behind anything in the interface. Um, you can uh, position it at the top of the main window, like so, or you can position it at the main toolbar, uh, which again is up here. Um, or you can uh, position it uh, back in the toolbar docker down here. Now, if you noticed all the toolbars, when you actually open them in their default configuration, they will have this edit me button that opens the uh, customized toolbar menu just so you can set them up. Personally, I don't actually ever use the position toolbar uh, menu. Um, I'm, I prefer drag and drop. So basically I just click on the tab here, uh, hold the left click uh, down on your mouse, and drag it to wherever you want it to go on the screen. Now I have a toolbar there. If I um, if I mouse over the edge of the toolbar, so you can see the arrows here that would allow me to grow and shrink the toolbar. If I mouse over like so and then double click, you'll actually see that it, it changes the toolbar position within that relative to the position that it's in. Uh, so if I do that again, You'll see that now this toolbar is connected to the bottom of it and if i double click it now it's actually butted up to the right hand side of it uh, so for instance um, if i double click like so and then i drag this next toolbar up here you'll see now that these are tabbed uh, there's there's actually two uh, tabs on this single um, uh, toolbar position um, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a toolbar here and I wanted a toolbar there, but I, I wanted to just drag it up there so that you can see that you can tab uh, in all the different toolbar docks as well. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to left click and drag this one down. You can, you can put it here like so um, and you can double click it and it'll bring it down there. Double click it and it'll take it back up. Um, Uh, I'll have it like this I think and you can drag this uh, divider here to anywhere you want so now I'm gonna I'm just gonna put it there like so and I'm gonna assume that this toolbar now is for my arranger and this toolbar is for my mixer uh, because this down here is my mixer um, 
where I would normally have my mixer docked, I should say. Uh, if I was to uh, right click on this now and dock the mixer in here, uh, the mixer has actually been docked up here, but I'll bring it down there like so. Right now, now I've got my mixer here. I'm going to assume this toolbar is for the mixer and this toolbar is for the arrange. I'm going to drag my next toolbar up to the top. Um, like I say, you have to keep in mind here that uh, I'm showing you the customizing. I'm not showing you where to put these toolbars. That's not the idea of these tutorials. I'm not here to show you, oh, this is where you put this toolbar, this is where you put that toolbar, and this is where you put the other toolbar. I'm here to show you that they can be put there. That's the whole point to these tutorials. That's the whole point to it, the complete point to it. So I'm going to, um, now I'm going to actually just close these, these toolbars off. You can right click like so and position close toolbar, or you can actually middle click with your mouse. And um, when you middle click with your mouse, it will close a tab, right? So now we've got a, a generalized toolbar up here that I haven't added any actions to yet. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what actions I add. If you see an action in later tutorials on a toolbar uh, that I don't tell you about because I'm not particularly using it at that time and you want to know what it's about, you can ask me direct on the forum. You can ask me direct via YouTube and I will tell you. But I'm not going to tell you what actions to put on your toolbars. The whole point here is that you customize Reaper to fit you. That's the whole point to these tutorials. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to start adding actions to these. I'm not going to show you how to do it on this video because I've already showed you I've showed you how to do it. I'm not, like I say, I'm not going to show you what actions to add. I'm going to add some of my actions to these buttons um, as and when I need them. Um, and my interface is actually starting to take uh, form now. I would normally have my mixer docked at the bottom uh, because I'm using a single screen on a laptop. I'll have a generalized toolbar at the top. Um, if you look at my interface here, I tend to have the transport in the top as well. Um, but you can actually have it wherever you want. Obviously, that's not a problem. Um, I tend to keep the master uh, up here, which is completely out of my mixer so that it's always locked into place. And I never, I never lose the master, no matter how many tracks I've got on screen. I can have 80 tracks and the master will always be in view. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, and as you can see, I've got toolbars all around my interface. Um, and this is starting to take that kind of shape now. Um, other than that, there's nothing much else that I can teach you about the toolbars themselves. Um, there's, there's other toolbars in the MIDI editor that we'll cover later when we come to the MIDI ed editor. Um, you can float toolbars and so on and so forth. But the point here is, again, the same as the menus. Uh, customize them to how you want them to be. Now, the very last thing I want to cover about toolbars, it's something that not a lot of people actually realize about, to be perfectly honest. Um, as I've already uh, done some customizations on my menus, I can just right click and insert MIDI like so. Right now, um, what I'm going to do here is, uh, let's just bring the cursor over here so everything acts around the cursor. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you uh, something that not a lot of people know about when it comes to toolbars. I'm going to right click and I'm going to customize toolbar. Um, I'm going to add an action. Uh, we'll look for slice. Uh, well, it's not slice, it might be split. Again, the naming definitions uh, are um, different in every app, uh, and you have to uh, you you have to name them how you want them to be. So I'm going to use uh, split under mouse cursor here. I'm going to I'm going to add that like so. Um, and I'm going to save that quickly. Like so. so I've got split item here under mouse cursor. But it's going to do nothing when I click on it. It's absolutely going to do nothing whatsoever. Uh, because the mouse cursor isn't over the item. Uh, so it's something that you'd normally run an action uh, while you've got the, uh, the uh, pointer over an item. But if I right click, I've now activated that button. So when I click on the item with my left click, there you go i've i've split wherever i wanted to to the grid that's because i right click the button and that actually activates the button so that 
that that action now becomes a left mouse click um on top of that you've you've got uh you've got a lot of preferences for mouse modifiers which we're not going to cover quite yet uh, the only reason i'm showing you that is because you could set up buttons to change mouse modifiers if you wanted to um, but like i say you can right click a button and now as you can see the button has become active uh, it's that orange color uh, and you can click here now I don't know whether you've noticed, but on my uh, mouse pointers as well, um, I've actually changed my mouse pointers, which is something we're going to look at um, probably. Uh, we'll, we'll cover that in the next lesson, actually. We'll do a very quick lesson on that uh, uh, for the next cookbook tutorial, um, just covering mouse pointers. Um, you don't have to design the mouse pointers yourself. You can go and look for them. I'm just going to do a quick tutorial on that next, just so you can see that it's a possibility. Uh, if you notice here that my mouse pointer has actually changed to the word armed with with a pointer, uh, and that pointer points to exactly where it's going to split, like so. Um, and when I when I right click this again, my pointer goes back to being the normal pointer. When I go to the edge, it'll say size. Uh, and when I click on the fade in, it'll say fade in. Same with fade out and so on and so forth. Um, if I hit control, it'll say copy and so on. That's because I've changed my pointers, that's all. Um, but we'll cover that on the next lesson. We'll do a very quick next uh, lesson uh, to cover mouse pointers. Um, that's pretty much all I can show you about toolbars. Uh, have a mess around, set up your toolbars how you want them to be, not how I've told you, but I didn't even tell you how to be, I just told you how they could be. Um, set them up how you need them to be to fit you. And don't worry about leaving empty space, because believe me, you will always fill them. You will always fill them. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and we'll see you on the next one.